You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the show. It's great to be with you here today. Can't wait to get started with our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday show, where the name of the game is not just transforming your body, but doing so in a way that you can stay healthy for life so that you don't lower your metabolic rate, that you don't end up with any of the diseases of the body from exercising too much or going too low on calories or doing anything that simply wouldn't be great for you and this vehicle that's transporting you through life for the rest of your life. So we want to keep quality of life high, but we also want to help you be able to transform your body. And if you work with people in your family, your friends, or this is what you do for work, I want to be able to share some of that clinical knowledge with you as well. So one of the fun things, I think, about doing this podcast and doing it on a daily basis is obviously I can get a lot out there at at a faster level. But it's the feedback that you provide me in our free Facebook group, which is cabralsupportgroup.com, or on Instagram, which is just my name, Stephen Cabral. And I get to see a lot of things that I didn't even know were not kind of part of the common vernacular. Like, what are we not talking about? And it should make sense, right? But this is... Think about what you do every day of your life. You know, you are, no matter what it is, if you're doing something six, eight hours a day, you're the expert in that field and you've been doing it for your 10,000 hours, right? Which is about 40 hours a week times five years. Anything that you've done for that long compared to at least the majority of the population, as long as you've been improving each year, you're the expert you know, in that. So whatever your field is, think about it. A lot of people, when you're talking about whatever you are the pro in, they're just not going to have the same kind of depth of knowledge. We always have to remember that. And I, I try to do my best to talk about that in a way on the Cabral concept. So there's a lot of podcasts out there and they just kind of go line by line with the research and they you know, give you what's, again, being researched, etc. And all of that is great. And, and I like that. And I'll listen to those as well. But the Cabral concept, what I try to do on this show is I read the research. I have practiced now for two decades. How can I share the knowledge that I've accumulated with you in a way that is actionable, that you can use in the real world, and that if you and I were having a conversation across from me, I'm just assuming that this isn't your field, that you're not the person who's been studying health and wellness for a decade or so. And I try to share the knowledge in that way. But what I'm basically saying is that I fall short sometimes and I'm not able to... Again, I assume in the wrong way that a lot of people know sometimes what I'm talking about. So I always want you to feel free to ask questions, to let me know when a concept isn't broken down enough and that it's not actionable enough. Because it's my job to go back then and say, okay, how can I say this in a better way? How can I cue people in a better way? And that's Again, it's, it's kind of nice coming from a fitness-based background as well, is because when you're helping someone from a fitness-based capacity and you're teaching them, let's say, to squat, or you're teaching them to do a Romanian deadlift, you know, there's a lot of proper biomechanics that has to happen so someone doesn't get injured, especially under heavy weight. So you're cueing, you have to cue people differently, and that just means the way in which you instruct them has to be different, because people learn from their own cues, from their own analogies. So there was something I said, though, last week, and I believe it was on 1237. If not, it was on 1236. And I talked about how, as an adult, you don't add or increase the number of fat cells in your body. And people, and I even shared this with my personal trainers, had no idea. And I should have known that people had no idea. This is a major topic. This is a major topic. And so what I want to go back is just kind of do a show right now that goes much more in depth than this. Because here's the thing. A lot of times we don't achieve our goals, and that includes body transformation, 
because we don't really know what we're talking about from a deeper level. And I say that about myself as well. Meaning like whenever I'm trying to achieve something, I most likely don't know at a deep level. I know at a surface level, like, hey, I want to do this. Like, for example, I'm, I try to like go outside of my field that I don't, I'm not an expert in by any means. So when I first started to get into podcasting, and again, I, don't, I wouldn't consider myself an expert podcaster by any means. I know how to complete a podcast. I know how to record a podcast. I know how to speak into a microphone. But, you know, like that's kind of what I knew at a surface level. Like, oh, you know, record a podcast. But when I was getting into it, the reason I hadn't done that for a year or so is I didn't sign up for any course or certification or hire a mentor. I didn't actually know how you literally would record your voice and get it onto iTunes. I didn't know. So I had to sign up and learn that at a deeper level. Well, it's the same for anything in life. I mean, that's like literally it. So what did I do? Well, I signed up for a course. I think it was like a 90-day course. I learned it and I realized, oh, this is the software I need. This is the microphone I need to buy. This is how I record. Here's the software I uploaded to and this, this, and the other thing. So it was like a it was this check, checklist, like super simple. And I again, I'm not a podcast mentor out there, but I have a link for those people who want to learn how to podcast. I just give you all the stuff that I use. It's free. The equipment's not free, of course, but you can just go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast in podcasting, not podcast. And you can check that out. But anyway, so what I want to share with you is this. Whatever goal you have right now, you might just have to get deeper on it. So when it comes to body transformation, a lot of people, and not even personal trainers and nutritionists, didn't know that our understanding of the human body right now, and we've been studying this now for decades, And we have good research, and I'll share it with you. The human body does not increase the number of fat cells. Now, let's say about a decade ago or so, and I'll link up this research as well. It was excellent research. came out in 2008. Yeah, so about a decade ago. So what researchers found, because they were searching for this answer, do we increase fat cells? Here is the answer. And it's extremely interesting. They found that obese people had double the number of fat cells or increase double the number of fat cells as they put on weight. But all of those fat cells were replaced by exactly the same amount. So meaning that every fat cell that you increase, a previous one dies off, gets eliminated. So when I looked at this, I said, oh, that's extremely interesting because it always remains a set number, which is what we always, well, we didn't always believe that, but when we prove that this is it, this is the number of fat cells that you have, we get it, we understand it. Now, in conventional medicine, and I'll break that down one more time because I want to make sure I do a good job of this. In conventional medicine, they're looking to see from this, oh, how can we then change the signals and the genes in the fat cells that create the formation of new fat cells. So again, let me repeat this. We have the same number of fat cells in our body. Once our body's matured, that's it. That's the number of fat cells we're going to have. Now, as I explained in a previous podcast, those fat cells, though, can increase in size or they can shrink. So think of it as a water balloon. Most people, when you're a kid, maybe as an adult, you filled up balloons with water and they expanded. And then, of course, you could throw them at each other as part of a game and they would explode. Well, that water can fill up your fat cell, which is the balloon, or it can be deflated out of it. And that's literally how our fat cells work. Our muscle tissue is not very much different. It can hold sarcoplasm. It can hold fluid, and that makes your muscles larger, or it could shrink them down. When you subtract your body fat, which is easy to calculate, from your body weight, you don't get dry muscle weight. You get lean body mass. And I've shared with you how to calculate your body fat before on a previous podcast on a training Thursday. So that lean body mass doesn't signal dry muscle weight. It does not. Your dry muscle weight, if you were to take your muscle, take all your burn out of that, might be about a third of total muscle. And that's simply because we know that your muscles are about 70 to 72% water. Think about that. The majority of your body is water. Fat cells, I'm going to do this on a separate episode of what's included in them. I'm going to use that for a separate show, though, because I want to really get this point home. And I like to keep one podcast per show topic, because then I can help you in different ways if you know it's 
loaded inside of that fat cell, well, then you might know how to shrink it as well. But here's the interesting thing. So the fat cell number does not increase, but rather the size of the fat cell. So it swells. That's the most important thing that you need to know because when I did a podcast maybe a year ago, there were people in this industry that I just let it roll right off me that said, oh, there's no such thing as toxic fat or toxic water weight. But again, even though they're, in quotations, experts in the field, they don't understand how fat cells can actually expand with total body burden or total toxic load. And we know that. I mean, we've known it for decades now. We know that that's where your body traps and holds things, including brain cells, which is predominantly fat. We, we know that because we can actually see it. When fat oxidizes, we can actually see what comes out of it. Excess estrogens, heavy metals, mold, you name it. So again, that's why toxic fat or fat is said to be 300 times more toxic than your blood because it's a storage compartment. So along with water that can expand it, again, as in the water balloon analogy, well, everything else inside that water. What else comes inside of water if you just to fill it out of a hose? Well, you're going to get chlorine and fluoride. You'll probably get some metals like aluminum. All of that's just kind of filling it up. So it's interesting to look at that now. You might say, well, some people seem to have more body fat than others. And I think that's a safe assumption to say, right? Some people have more body fat than others. Well, again, Ayurveda taught us this. It's just being taught incorrectly in America. But in Ayurveda, we, we know that the kapha body type has naturally inborn, you know, genetically, more, a larger number of fat cells in the body. And it's easier for them to accumulate, which means fill up their body fat stores. They're more sensitive to carbohydrates. They're more sensitive to stress on their thyroid. So, and, and they're more sensitive to other things as well, such as sodium. But when we look at that, we can begin to understand there is a difference in body type. However, when we look at the kapha body type and we look at the kapha body type, and we say, okay, here's the kapha body type at 22 years old. And let's just use a female for an example. Female, 22 years old. She is uh, five six, and she weighs... 130 pounds. We say, okay, you know, great. 130 pounds, great shape, uh, athletic, exercises, fit, all of that, right? Now, an ectomorph or vata body type at 5'6", maybe they're good at 118 pounds, right? Well, it's a difference of 12 pounds. It's not a huge difference. They have different bodies, right? Different bone structure, etc. So here's the thing. That's the kapha body type. It's after puberty. The body's matured. But now we look at that same 22-year-old female, and instead of 22, she is now 42. And instead of weighing 130 pounds, she weighs 165 pounds. So we say, well, what happened? How did this happen? Does she have more muscle? Most likely not. Maybe even a little bit less because maybe there's less exercise or there's less pro-hormones. So we say, well, how did she put on then? She must have added more fat. Well, the technical correct term would have been she expanded her, her fat stores. This is why I always tell people that there's always an answer because your body didn't necessarily change dramatically. It's still the same body, but the signals for fat storage increased. That's what we need to be looking at. It's still the same 22-year-old female, still the same bone structure for the most part, maybe a little less bone, maybe a little less muscle. So yes, that could lead to a little bit less of a metabolic rate. But a metabolic rate is all part of the signaling process, right? Metabolic rate is a signal. It can increase or decrease. So I want to go through with you now what would signal the body to increase fat storage. Because now, yes, we know that new fat cells are added, but they're subtracted at the same rate. So now we have a steady state of fat stores. And when we looked at the studies, we saw there were more fat cells in people that were obese than people that were lean. However, the same people that were obese could also lose the weight. So that's why I tell you and I urge you that you have to understand is that everything is genetic. Everything's genetic. Your high cholesterol, your high blood pressure, my rheumatoid arthritis, my 
issues with TH2 dominance, my mastocytosis, my POTS, my, you know, what else, type 2 diabetes, all of those things. But I don't have them anymore. I did have them. They weren't fun. It wasn't a fun decade. I write that decade off. But here's the thing. I don't have them anymore. And you don't have to have them either. Because yes, it's a part of your genetic. Yes, everything is genetic. Your genetics matter. But the most important thing to understand is that we control our genetics through something called epigenetics. And epigenetics is our body's genes response from the environment that they're living in. And if the environment they're living in is hostile, you will most likely get a body that is challenging its environment. Now, you might say, well, I don't see how it's supporting me. But you have to understand is that inflammation that most people are trying to squelch is a symptom of an imbalanced environment. It's not a disease. I know it leads to disease. Listen, I, I get that part. But it's not a disease. It's the basis point. It's the marker, the biggest marker that we know of that's implicated in basically every disease out there. Almost every. So, But we have to look at now why the inflammation. The same thing is, okay, we have this girl. She's 22 years old. She's healthy and fit. Same body type. She's 22. Now she's 42. And she weighs 35 more pounds. Why did she gain 35 pounds? We have to ask ourselves that. We have to begin to understand that weight gain and weight loss is a science. There are levels to this. And by forcing your body to try to lose the weight through exercise and dieting alone is typically not the answer because there's a rebound effect. So that's what I like to look at. And let me give you some of the reasons of signaling and then why I don't always believe that it's just straight up diet and exercise is the answer. Now, I want to put a caveat there because if you are currently more than 10, 15 pounds away from your body weight and you're not looking at your nutrition of eating a predominantly whole food diet and you are not moving your body and you're not even getting 10,000 steps per day for, of movement, we do have to start there, okay? We have to start there. So again, I don't want to say it has nothing to do with diet and exercise because that's, I mean, that was my, my original background. So absolutely, I believe in that. It matters. But what happens when diet and exercise aren't enough? Or just in general, shouldn't we be looking at why the change, why the lowering in metabolic rate? You know, why could that 22-year-old girl eat 1,800, 2,000 calories a day? And now she'll put on weight if she even goes above 1,300 calories. That's a difference of 500. What happened? Let's take a look at that because this is very, very important. Remember, she's not adding fat cells, not adding at least the total number. What she's doing is expanding fat cells. So we know, again, we know who's more prone to it, but it doesn't matter because anybody, any body type, even the ectomorph could put on body fat. Absolutely. Not as easy, especially when they're younger, but it can happen. Okay, I'm going to go through these quickly, and then I'm going to do a specific podcast on each one of these related to weight loss if I have not already done so. I mean, you know on the Cabral concept, let me see what episode today is. So today, for all the notes and links, because I will link up the study as well, there, there are multiple studies. Go to stevencabral.com forward slash 1244. All right, everything today about the real truth about fat loss, go to stevencabral.com forward slash 1244. All right, I've done shows basically on all of these and this fall, I'll be coming up with a course. It's an actual teaching course. I don't want it to be another diet plan. I want to teach you once and for all how to lose the weight and keep it off. Now, again, this information is always available on the Cabral concept. It always is. And I give away everything that I do. But if you want it in one spot, that's what I'll be doing. Okay. So here's the thing. We know that low thyroid can signal a lowered metabolic rate. Now, I've gone over before how the thyroid becomes lowered. So I'd love you to go into those podcasts as well. If you don't know what those podcasts are, go to cabralsupportgroup.com and just ask people, hey, which ones are the ones on lower thyroid? Later this year and into 2020, I'll be doing shows for each of these like breakdowns, but we'll, we'll go into that a little later. All right. Another one that most people don't... So people know about low thyroid, right? That, but you can, again, you can speed back up that thyroid. You really can. Again, this is something that we do at a clinical level all the time. And you can test for this. So again, low and high cortisol are two more reasons to lower metabolic rate. And you can check this out. Again, thyroid adrenal hormone test. The thyroid adrenal hormone test. The very best lab available in the world to look at your hormones, 
and how they affect your overall weight gain or weight loss. The next one is this, a four high or four low on a hair tissue mineral analysis. Four high shows high levels of stress, overwhelm, anxiety, fight or flight. A four low, well, at one point there was a four high. Now you're more of a burned out pattern. What does that mean? Less response to stress, not in a good way. It means lowered metabolic rate, more of a hibernation based state. Body's trying to heal, body's trying to repair. Okay, next one, estrogen dominance. What about higher levels of estrogen? Or as you'll see in a thyroid adrenal hormone test, estrogen does not have to be high. It typically is not high in females. We run as many thyroid adrenal hormone labs as anyone in the world. And I'll tell you this, almost never, almost never do we see estrogen high, but we see it relatively high compared to progesterone. And that's why it's an issue. That's why it's called estrogen dominance. And you get all of the symptoms of estrogen dominance. Go to steamcabral.com forward slash podcast. Just type in estrogen dominance and you will find those podcasts. Okay. Another reason why the fat cells get a signal to expand, to store high levels of toxins in the body. Mercury, aluminum, cadmium, arsenic, bromine, all of those. Heavy metals, additional ones as well. Higher levels of copper. Higher levels of circulating estrogen, even what we call endotoxins or endogenous forms of self-produced toxins. Higher levels of estrogen could be one of those. Important to look at that. It gets overlooked, which is why sauna and functional medicine detoxes, all of those things are so imperative to getting well because it's not just about losing weight. You need to get the body well. You need to get it healthy because a healthy body, it can't be overweight. It's impossible. A healthy body, it can't be sick. Not possible. Most of us know that a higher level of blood sugar, especially fasting glucose in the morning, larger signal to store hormone. And the the, um, reverse of that is also true, or inverse, is that you have lower levels of blood sugar, you're going to tap into more body fat burning. All right, so important to look at that. The next one is this. An imbalanced level of leptin and ghrelin based on your body not getting enough foods that tell it it's not in a starvation state. Typically, those are carbohydrates. So it means we don't want to eliminate carbs, starches in particular, and you can just use root vegetables if you'd like, for too long. We typically never eliminate them for more than a 21-day detox or the 21-day initial start to an elimination diet. Part of that is what's called the Samoji effect. And you can check on that on a previous podcast of where we get that big cortisol spike sometimes in the morning. Because we're doing things and we're not in a relaxed state. And the last one is this. And I want to leave you with this. Because you can see how many areas can affect your weight. And that's why it's not always about calories in, calories out. I did a podcast, another show. And again, all of these are free. On the two gut bacteria that basically predict and dictate levels of being able to burn body fat. And the nice thing is, you can rebalance those. Bacterioides and Firmicutes. And these two gut bacteria need to be in balance so that we can burn fat. How do we do that? Well, we need to make sure that there's not an overgrowth of pathogenic bacteria or candida overgrowth or H. pylori or parasites. And you can find those on an organic acids test in a stool test. Remember, functional medicine testing is a window into the inside of your body because you have no idea. I mean, like it's, it's just so hard to know. You won't know food sensitivities. You won't know gut bacteria. You won't know how the body's functioning unless you actually test and get in there and look. Now, you don't have to test. You can base it on, hey, am I stressed? Yes or no. What's my thyroid look like overall? Yes or no. Like, do I have the symptoms of low thyroid? And you can check out the podcast on that. And you can do a functional medicine detox if you don't want to do like an environmental test or one of those or a hair tissue mineral analysis. So there are always options. My job, again, is to give you those options. So I appreciate you tuning in today because I just wanted to be able to better explain the fact that our level of fat cells are basically at a stable number. They do get replaced, but they also get removed at that same rate. And the way that we become over fat, which is the technical term, is by expanding that adipose tissue, which stands for the fat cells. As that happens, the body swells. And that's what we look at as an increase in fat weight. Now, we know the way to reverse this 
is yes, of course, burn the body fat. So that can happen through nutrition exercise and should happen through nutrition exercise. But when nutrition and exercise has kind of plateaued, and even if not, I would still look at it from a wellness perspective. What is signaling your body to either lower metabolic rate, lower fat burning, or tell your body that it's not in a safe space to be able to shed the weight? Hopefully today's podcast was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Cabral Concept. I appreciate you. And if this show was helpful, please do feel free to pass it along to anyone else you believe it could serve. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or in a practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.